Harry's Wife, Part 104.21 Nemesis 4 Beige 2 Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I continue to utilise video, broadcast material and information found in the dark and mysterious depths of the internet to help you understand more about narcissism. An article from Geo News by the, as ever, enigmatically named Webbed Desk tells us Kate Middleton is pregnant with baby number four. Well, well, well. Of course, there was some recent speculation that Harry's wife had fallen pregnant again. Of course, many would think that it would defy science that that would occur, and that somewhere there may well have been a surrogate locked away that had been finding themselves carrying the delinquent spills of the old pink pancakes. Nevertheless, there's been no confirmation of that. What is this, though, suggesting that Team Wales are going to notch up four versus the controversial two of the Sussexes? Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, is reportedly pregnant with baby number four, it is claimed. The International Business Times cited an insider claiming that Kate Middleton is expecting her fourth baby. And she and Prince William had told the pregnancy news to Queen Elizabeth before she died on September the 8th. The report claims there are whispers that William told the Queen just prior to her passing, which makes it even more of a blessing. They'd literally just found out. She was so happy for them. They knew how much the Queen loved her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She doted on them, especially the little ones. The source told Star Magazine, Kate Middleton is glowing, adding that the Princess has been wanting another baby for the past two years. Kate Middleton and Prince William are already parents of three, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Loose Cannon Louis. Remains to be seen whether this is accurate, but if it is, good news, of course, for the Waleses. But, of course, how might a narcissist respond to such news that your sister-in-law and brother-in-law are expecting? Well, certain narcissists would offer congratulations to them, and would do so not because they genuinely care, but where they're mid-range, there's the operation of the facade. That utilising a benign method through congratulations asserts control over the parents, whilst allowing the narcissist draw fuel by way of their polite responses, and to the outside world, it's something that's done that is polite and appropriate, and therefore manages that facade, which is a residual benefit. A lesser narcissist may similarly offer such congratulations, not because they would be operating a facade, but their narcissism dictates that it is an appropriate thing to do in the circumstances. Often you'd find that the lower lesser or middle lesser, and sometimes even an upper lesser A or B, would offer the congratulations with some idiotic comment alongside it, such as, are you sure it's yours? Or, I thought you couldn't have any children, so it must be the milkman's, etc, etc. Of course, some people would just take that as a joke and not be offended by it, but others would find it distasteful. But of course, the lesser, having no genuine emotional empathy and not operating even a facade, may well offer such congratulations, but spike it with a form of provocation in such manner. A greater narcissist would offer congratulations, and may well send some kind of gift as also as part of the management of the facade, and demonstrating that they fit in. Mid-rangers are more likely to be falling over themselves with, oh, that's fantastic news, I'm so pleased for you. Sometimes there, of course, might be a backhanded compliment in there, along the lines of, you must be so thrilled, after all, it's taken you seven years to actually have any children. Highlighting the fact that the couple had had difficulties with conception prior to that. 
Nevertheless, on the face of it, it would appear like a compliment. Other mid-rangers, particularly those of A and B, middle mid-range A, middle mid-range B, would come out with effusive praise. Oh, this is wonderful. You're going to have a little baby. And such things as, oh, it'd be fantastic for your existing son. Or, oh, I can't wait until he, come, he or she comes on play dates with our little Tarquin. And so forth. All part of that sickly sweet facade of helpfulness and niceness. But it isn't genuine, of course. It's purely done for the pursuit of the prime aims. So those are generally some of the reactions that would otherwise occur. But what about Harry's wife? Well, what you have to factor into it, of course, is not only the sub-school of narcissists responding, and with Harry's wife she's middle-mid-range, I've yet to tell you whether she's A or B, however, that with that comes also whether the relevant appliance in the fuel matrix, i.e. the Princess of Wales and the Prince of Wales, are painted white or black. And, of course, they're painted black at the moment, and particularly so... Catherine, since she is the nemesis. Accordingly, there would initially be silence. Why? The narcissist would be envious of this news. The fact that they're having another child, while well, the narcissist is not, irrespective of whether the narcissist can or wants them, the fact is that this person's doing something which is garnering them attention. And as always, the narcissist hates that. And therefore, initially, there's likely to be silence as the narcissist stays in a position of withdrawal and would smear to somebody else, bitching about the fact, gosh, do you think she could have a fourth one? She's rather old, isn't she? And she looks awfully thin. It could damage the baby, etc., making unpleasant noises in that regard. There may follow, purely for the purpose of facade management, some kind of congratulatory message placed upon some uh, social media platform, possibly through Archwell. But I suspect it's more likely that there would be silence. The reason being, first of all, envy of this event and the fact that the painted black status would outweigh the need for facade. The fact that the Princess of Wales, expertly advised, had nothing at all to do with Harry's wife at the recent funeral of the late Queen Elizabeth II means that when she comes back upon the radar, the narcissism drags back up what has gone on in the past because it's not yet been able to exact a form of punishment against the Princess of Wales, and may well do so this time by not passing any comment or congratulation. Of course, this is all predicated on whether the news is accurate in the first place that she is pregnant with baby number four. But one is assuming that's the case for the purpose of giving you an example of how a narcissist would react to another member of the family being found to be pregnant. This draws attention away from Harry's wife, the news of a baby is always more or less greeted favourably around the world, and of course the popularity of the Prince and Princess of Wales becomes solidified all the more should there be another Wales on the way. To help you understand more also about the way that a narcissist responds with regard to children, I'm now going to segue this video with another of mine to deal with a question that you often ask me, which is about whether narcissists love their children. So I'm going to bolt that on now for you to listen and continue to educate yourself, which will help you understand more also about the way that Harry's wife regards her children, assuming you accept that she has some. I'm H.G. Tudor. Keep on listening. Do narcissists love their children? In some instances, this is a very easy question to answer because the behaviour of the narcissist shows an abhorrent behaviour towards said children. So, for instance, the children are beaten, they're sexually abused, they're shouted at, neglected, and in those instances, the intimate partner primary source victim, invariably the other parent or step-parent, realises that the narcissist clearly does not love those children. However, many instances are not as clear-cut as that. The narcissist looks to be particularly involved with the children, playing with them, encouraging them with their schoolwork, attending school events, coaching them 
with regard to music or other extracurricular activities, apparently giving them career advice, providing them with financial support, even where the relationship between the narcissist and the intimate partner primary source has ended and there is a divorce situation or separation and an ongoing co-parenting scenario, the narcissist parent may still behave in a way which appears to be one of ostensibly supporting those children financially, morally, uh, pastorally, taking an interest in their sporting achievements and education. And therefore, it becomes more difficult. The victim asks, he evidently has it in for me, but he seems so supportive and so loving of his children. And that causes confusion. That causes often the victim to think that it's their fault, that they are the one that has brought this behaviour out in the narcissist. They are the one that has caused the narcissist to behave like that towards them because they're not exhibiting any similar behaviours towards anybody else, least of all the children. And therefore it can be very disorientating for the victim to see this behaviour, whilst experience something else towards them. Of course, another aspect of this is to doubt that the individual can be a narcissist because they seem so into their children, so supportive, so loving, and seem to genuinely derive joy from their interactions with the children. Such behaviour, of course, is invariably exhibited by mid-range narcissists and greater narcissists. And, of course, this is all part of the facade. All of those narcissists operate, operate facades, although of differing types. Some are the facade of being a really decent person. Some are the facade of being helpful. Some are a facade of superiority. But it all links into essentially treating the children well. However, the creation of that facade is a means by which it can be utilised to triangulate with the main victim being the intimate partner primary source or former intimate partner primary source. Remember, children are also appliances to the narcissist and for the most part are non-intimate secondary sources. There can be instances where one of the children becomes a non-intimate partner primary source and indeed in some instances of where sexual abuse occurs, they might be an intimate partner secondary source or even an intimate partner primary source. But in most instances where there is no sexual abuse taking place, then what accords is that the child is a non-intimate secondary source. This means, of course, that they must be controlled like any other appliance in the fuel matrix of the narcissist. This also means that they provide fuel character traits and residual benefits. Children are very useful to a narcissist parent where the child is achieving so that the narcissist can benefit from the child's achievements. Oh, his, his talent for football is the consequence of my coaching of him or she gets her brains from me. Thus, the child serves a purpose and invariably the child is relatively easy to control particularly when they're very young. Remember, most non-intimate secondary sources are treated well by narcissists because they form part of the facade, that the narcissist doesn't deal with them so often as to their fuel provision to become stale, and they are less likely to cause problems to the narcissist's control, meaning devaluation doesn't, is not necessary. Of course, the narcissist may issue devaluing behaviour towards the children, but it will be done under the auspices of discipline correcting them, guiding them, and teaching them. And therefore, such devaluing behaviour may pass under the radar on a number of occasions. Moreover, the narcissist benefits in sometimes a lighter approach to those children in order to cause the non-narcissist parent to have to be the disciplinarian. And that can invariably result in resentment from the children towards that non-narcissist parent which the narcissist parent can then exploit. All of these are factors which are beneficial to the narcissist. Control can be asserted by being, to seen to, by being seen to be the playful parent or the kinder parent or the less strict parent. Fuel is, of course, obtained from the children's emotional reactions. Character traits can be obtained, as I explained. And a residual benefit is, of course, the facade of being the caring parent. Understand, however, that because this individual is a narcissist, they have no emotional empathy. And that means no empathic traits. And that means they are incapable of love. 
What is being demonstrated towards the children is merely a benign form of manipulation, exhibiting apparent patience, guidance, spending money on them, helping them with their homework, coaching them in their sporting achievements. But it is all too easy for a victim ensnared by a narcissist to think, this is genuine, this is love that's being demonstrated, and of course, your emotional thinking doesn't help the position. It wants you worrying about whether you're right about the individual being a narcissist, so you keep thinking about the narcissist and thus feeding your addiction. It causes you to doubt yourself, so that perhaps you'll talk about it with friends, and thus you're talking about the narcissist with other people, and again, feeding the addiction. The narcissist cannot and does not love his or her children. Despite any appearance to the contrary, that is just a veneer where dealing with the primary source, or more usually, part of the facade. And it is done to gain those prime aims, as it is always done by any narcissist. The fact is that even if there is no apparent downside with regard to the treatment of the narcissist with their children, that still does not mean that they love them. For instance, think about the narcissist and friends. Many narcissists have friends and keep them, and there is never any falling out that occurs. That doesn't mean that the narcissist genuinely likes them. They can't. It's a transaction. I will be friends with you because that way I can control you, you give me fuel, and you provide me with character traits and residual benefits. Therefore, my narcissism selects that I am better off treating you in a benign fashion. Therefore, I am fun, interesting to be with. I'll do favours for you, in the similar way that the narcissist does with that other secondary source, the child. Of course, there may be other factors where, over time, you start to realise the absence of emotional empathy even with a mid-range or greater narcissist. It might be the failure to turn up for scheduled appointments for visitation with the children, for contact. It might be harsh discipline, uh, harsh discipline towards the child, the removal of privileges, um, being overly harsh with them verbally or physically by way of punishment. Often an indicator is as the child gets older, interference in the child's relationships with their own friends, and especially when it comes to a romantic involvement, because this adversely threatens the narcissist's control over that child. And the narcissist, being a narcissist, has to assert control and cannot help him or herself by interfering. There are other ways in terms of the narcissist being an overly pushy parent, interfering, always telling the child what to do, not letting them do things, not letting them exercise their own independence. And so, whilst there are many obvious unpleasant behaviours that can be meted out towards the child, physical violence, sexual molestation, neglect, failure to provide them with emotional support, being dismissive, not paying for their upkeep, not spending time with them, there are also more subtle behaviours that can, over time, be evidenced by what is apparently, on the face of it, a kind and considerate parent. Even when those things are not present, you must understand that where the individual has been ascertained as a narcissist, even though they may be pleasant towards the children and wholly unpleasant to you, that doesn't mean that they love their children. The children are just being treated as the objects that they are and are a part of another transaction like any other secondary source is. If you are experiencing difficulties with regard to the narcissist and the issue of children, you can do no better than accessing the following assistance packages, Divorcing the Narcissist, How to Co-Parent with a Narcissist, and Child Defender. You will find details of those in the Knowledge Vault, and many, many people have used them and accessed them and have found them to be extremely helpful and unrivaled with regard to the assistance provided in giving you solutions in a cost-effective and timely manner. And if you need any further bespoke assistance, arrange an audio consultation with me. It is a regular theme that I advise on with regard to the resolution to your satisfaction of ongoing disputes and difficulties when dealing with the narcissist and children, whether it appertains to court proceedings or just protecting the children per se. I have advised many, many people, and I look forward to helping you also. I am H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>